Welcome back to another episode of Nido. In case you missed it, last week I hosted about a three hour live stream. And uh, if you're one of those people who keep commenting about me doing longer videos, that's uh, something that you might be interested in. Personally, I would set it to the playback speed to like 1.5 or something like that, just to make it a bit more watchable. But during that live stream, basically what we did is uh, we expanded the city towards the other side of the river. Uh, and uh, obviously during live streams, the, the amount of progress that one can make is very small because you have to like, you know, answer questions and show people around and then you get caught up in, in these weird conversations. So, you know, in terms of progress, not a lot, but uh, we did lay out some of these roads and I wanted to, well, spend some time in this episode to sort of complete them. Now, uh, when I started planning the series in the, you know, the first uh, episode, I, I kind of wanted to have the projects uh, for every video to be sort of finished, uh, or at least to look finished uh, for the cinematics. This episode will be sort of the first one where that won't happen. I expanded way too far out from the main city. So in order to sort of have everything come together for, you know, for the cinematics at the end, uh, you know, I needed way more time than I had, so I had to, you know, cut my losses, I guess, and and just uh, detail a section of it. it. It will give you a good idea of how everything's going to turn out in the end, because I did, like, detail areas of multiple places that in future episodes I will have to just replicate it, probably in the next episode. Uh, I really want to get this this whole area done. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of having, you know, weird gaps in, in here and there. I feel like that's, uh, yeah, that just doesn't look great in general. Uh, I, I'd rather have like a more compact city and start growing outwards and just have the projects be like really finished. Uh, in any case, uh, one thing that I wanted to mention uh, that I did during the live stream, but I'm going to repeat it again just in case you missed it, is the fact that I uh, just want to give a, cu a quick shout out to Urbanist who has made a cobblestone road that uh, you're going to see me tinker with uh, in just a couple of minutes. It's a one lane, uh, one way co a cobblestone road, which looks great. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Urbanist. It's in the workshop actually was like number one in the workshop uh, last week. Uh, so I'm going to include a link in the description that you can go check out and just give him a good review. <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate that. But uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's something else that I wanted to quickly mention uh well that's that's all i can think of right now i should have written my notes uh, but i haven't for this episode in any case uh, what i'm doing uh, right now literally in this very moment is detailing this uh roundabout i i struggle a lot with this one mainly because i kept changing my mind about the roads that go around it as you can see here i'm using like a one lane or one tile width road and i eventually slowly converted them into a tram track kind of road. So that changed the width of the thing, which meant that I had to move all these like inner nodes uh, multiple times. I couldn't make up my mind. And I think there's a little bit of that uh, during this clip. That the center, you know, detailing of this uh, of this uh, sort of uh, monument in the middle, it will pretty much remain. It's just like the edges of this uh, roundabout will change a little bit. In fact, it's going to turn out more it's, it's basically gonna look less like a circle <laughs> at the end once I'm finished and, and more like the icon for location, if that makes any sense. You'll, you'll see it's more like a drop shape uh, thing, but uh, I think it, it's very fitting. It's not perfect and, I, and that's kind of one of the things that I like about this project in general. I have a lot of like tiny imperfections that make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, I was like really, like my OCD, like at first wasn't necessarily like happy with it. But uh, as we've uh, made this much progress, it all kind of like comes together in its randomness, if that makes sense. Now, talking about trams real quick, I mentioned, I know that I mentioned this before, but uh, during the live stream, we created a test line, meaning just added a bunch of stops uh, throughout uh, throughout the city and, and had some, some trams running. I actually switched to the Barcelona uh, tram asset uh, the Citadis, if I'm not mistaken. I like it a lot, but I think it's a little bit too long. Uh, so one one thing uh, a viewer suggested during the live stream is to use 
a combination of different models, like in even different times, like older models mixed with newer models. So I, I might keep hunting in the workshop for more tramps. Uh, if you have good suggestions, uh, please uh, include links in, in the comment section below this video. I would love to see them. Uh, but I think I want something a bit more short, a bit shorter, I guess is the word that I should use, mainly because uh, these long trams block a huge section of the road and that's not something that will probably help traffic in the future. So far traffic has been like perfect, no issues whatsoever. But you know, as the city grows, we might end up having uh, a lot of issues. I'm, I don't expect them because we have enough ins and outs. Usually if you have really bad traffic, that means you're trying to funnel a lot of cars into one into one uh, place or one neighborhood or anything like that. Just something to keep in mind, random tip there. Um, it's not always because of that, but more often than not, whenever I see screenshots on Reddit, it's like people are like, oh yeah, they have like one freeway connection and everything is just funnel through that and obviously tons of traffic problems. But um, I totally forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, tramps. So I wanna, I wanna mix, I wanna have different models and different eras uh, throughout the city. I think that will make it a bit more uh, pretty, uh, give it a bit more character. And uh, another thing that a viewer suggested, originally I wanted the river to sort of have just dirt coastlines, but a viewer suggested that I should actually put some keys in here. I was a little bit hesitant about that, but I ended up doing it. So uh, I think actually it was indeed a great idea. I think it looks great. And uh, there's, there's gonna be some detailing of that coming up in just uh, a few moments. Oh uh, yeah, I remember one thing that I wanted to quickly mention is that I moved my merch store. Uh, it's in a totally new, a new website <laughs> that's actually way easier to navigate. So I'm gonna keep this this uh, shameless self-promotion short. Uh, there's new designs in, in a new website. And uh, yeah, go check it out. The link will be in the description or shrewdustercom slash store uh, with your purchase. You'll just, uh, I'll, I'll get a tiny cut and you'll be helping, you know, me running this channel a little bit more. So thank you in advance for that. Uh, and um, moving on, one thing that I that you're probably seeing me do here is uh, put this ship in the middle of the river trying to, well, basically what I was doing is I was trying to measure the height of the bridge because I wanted to make this one navigable. It's still like, I mean, I'm not planning on having actual ferries in here or anything like that. It's probably gonna be a still river. I mean, maybe, maybe in the future I will add some ferries. I, I think it's a little bit too narrow for that. But the point is that the height of the bridges actually makes sense. It's the right height, barely, but it is the right height. Um, and uh, you're gonna see me tinker with all these bridges here in a moment. I mean, primarily this one, I ended up moving it a couple blocks away from this because otherwise uh, these ramps, just, I didn't have enough room for them. And it, it, it looked a little bit odd having this like hill. Well, that's why I call this episode embankment because I had to like raise the uh, the keys a little bit uh, and the terrain a little bit. So it is kind of an embankment, embankment or a levee. Uh, in any case, moving and in just a second you're seeing me move the bridge a few blocks away and then I well I had to connect it to the main uh, boulevard road there I should have caught that clip for some reason got <laughs> yeah uh, for some reason when I imported all the footage for this episode till so sorry I keep going on tangents but I um, they, they got disorganized for some reason there I had to like re-record this commentary because there was a random clip that showed basically the f like final look of everything uh just like in the middle of the episode you'll have to wait for the cinematics for for that I'm afraid now at least because I had I reordered the clips except that one apparently uh in any case um this is the new location of the bridge and I just uh, went ahead and, and used the same uh style and aesthetic from that uh bridge that we did a couple episodes ago and then uh, just tidying everything else with these uh these castle walls uh by the way the castle uh topic keeps coming up i i know i mentioned this before but i'll say it again uh, i am building like a chateau slash castle but that's gonna happen like way later in the series it's not gonna happen soon and i have a perfect spot for it so just something uh that i wanted to to point out well, uh, uh, once more uh, one thing though, uh, talking about what's happening on the screen again, 
I, I wanted to have like different bridges. They all kind of look the same, but uh, I was uh, using the limited uh, assets that I had for bridges in order, and just combining in different ways in order to, to have more unique ones. So in this case, we have uh, a main bridge with two very wide uh, bike lanes. Actually, one of them is a pedestrian uh, bridge and the other one is bike lanes. I don't know if they, I think the pedestrians use both of them or bikers use both of them, but just to make it uh, a bit nicer, I decided to make one uh, a bike only bridge and the other one pedestrian only. And uh, I later, of course, removed the bike lanes from the middle of the bridge itself. So just to give it a bit more variety, I wanted all these, th there you go, you can, well, no, actually this is a different one. Uh, but you get my point. Uh, I just wanted, they all kind of look the, sim the same, but they're slightly different. That's what I was aiming for. And of course, we're continuing with the expansion of the city. I'm not planning on having like modern skyscrapers or anything like that, just right off the bat, worth pointing that out. Uh, I wanted uh, sort of the height of the buildings to be sort of the same. I might do a few more like, like tenement block kind of... Uh, buildings outside of the city on the suburbs maybe on the other side of the of the bay um but that's i'll make that decision when the time comes for the time being i just want to keep the city looking at least the city in the center looking uh this uh with this level of uh you know f like number of floors uh going up and just keep everything sort of uniform and uh and tidy now, I uh, just want to change subjects slightly. Uh, I forgot to mention this, but I, I would say about two weeks ago, I've started having this issue with this uh, with this game. Um, it's, well, th what happens is every time I load the save game, there's like a handful of buildings, like I would say like five or six buildings that become abandoned and I'll have to replop them. And uh, this is, I mean, obviously the buildings weren't abandoned when I saved the game, they just show up as abandoned when I load the, the, the game. Apparently I'm not the only one with this issue. I've uh, I, I tried to reach out to uh, TPB about it. He's uh, the creator of the No Abandonment mod, in case uh, you didn't know. Uh, if you're having a similar problem, just go in the workshop and, and just share your two cents. Uh, I think there's, uh, I created a thread for it. So that might be, uh, uh, you know, just help uh, diagnose uh, the issue faster. So uh, thank you for your contribution. Hopefully we can get that sorted out. I mean, it's it's not like a game breaker thing, but uh, since every single building in the city is manually plopped, well, it, it turns out that every time I load the save, you have to like replop these uh, five or six abandoned buildings. It's, it's kind of a pain in the ass, it, especially if, if I don't notice that they are abandoned because I might run the simulation and what happens is they get replaced with random buildings. So it's very possible that somewhere in the city, there's like a random building that I didn't even notice uh, that's like totally clipping on the street or something like that. So if you see that, just point it out in the, uh, uh, in the comments uh, below. I mean, for this episode and future episodes too, um, <laughs> uh, just put the timestamp like, oh, at minute uh, 13, 52 seconds, uh, there's a building in the middle of the road. So let me know so I can go fix it. I, I, I did like a bit of a Q&A, uh, the qu quality assurance of the city uh, in general, trying to find uh, some of these uh, respawn buildings. I fixed like like five or six of them, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Not, not ideal. In fact, uh, in the before and after that's coming up in, in just a few seconds, you're going to see like areas of the city that we previously built have changed dramatically. I added like inner roads and stuff like that. I did all that off camera, just so you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, but you'll get to see them uh, in, in the before and after very clearly. You can, I guess, rewind and replay it if, if you really want to. And as we finish the details of that uh, roundabout, just want to bring your attention to this side of the city real quick. Uh, as you can see, I'm mixing the architecture style. These uh, buildings are definitely more modern, and I kind of did this in other places. I've already talked about even this, but just wanted to highlight uh, whenever I do, because they do get blend in quite uh, quite nicely. Uh, in the cinematics, it's kind of hard to miss unless you're looking for them, so just uh, pointing it out there. These are some just offices and shops that look, you know, a bit more modern. Uh, they were probably made uh, a little bit later in time. And finally, this is uh, just me decorating and detailing these uh, boulevards. 
uh, on the former shoreline or the initial shoreline of the city. Uh, it's it's going to be a pretty simple design, just rows of pine trees and, and clusters of bushes. Uh, this is, is again going to make more sense in a few seconds once I show you the cinematics, but uh, it's going to be pretty low key, not uh, too heavily detailed, just uh, clusters of trees for the most part. Uh, and uh, the occasional just big group of bushes and things. I'm not 100% sold on, on those, but I might. Uh, I might tweak them in between episodes or in future episodes for that matter. But here it is, the long awaited before and after shot. Uh, as you can see, quite a lot has been accomplished and there's still a lot more work to do. But if you enjoyed this episode so far, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel uh, and you want to be notified next time I post a video, you might want to subscribe. But uh, that's, that's pretty much all for now. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.